Before we get to this episode, I want to ask you a quick question. Are you a woman who's 50 or older? And are you ready for a career or job change? Maybe you're yearning to do more meaningful work that really lights you up. I'm asking because my friends Dana and Wendy of Camp Reinvention have the coolest career program. It's called the Career Change Accelerator Program, and they coach amazing women in a 12-week program to reimagine what their careers might look like and to help them see new possibilities. Their very cool program is kicking off on October 27th. And if you even have an inkling, I might be ready for something new and different. I invite you to check out the details. There's a link in the show notes and let's get busy and think about new possibilities. Welcome to Reinvention Revels, stories of brave and unapologetic women, 50 to 90 years young, who have boldly reimagined life on their own terms to find new purpose and possibilities. I'm your host, Wendy Battles. Ready for a dose of inspiration? Let's get to it. Happiest of New Year's to you, Reinvention Revels. I am so excited to welcome in 2021 on a fresh start. I'm guessing you are too. How could we not want to leave behind the challenges we faced last year in our families, our communities, the country, and the world? I know we all know last year was a year like no other. It was sad, anxiety-producing, disturbing, wrenching on so many levels. And that's just scratching the surface. I had to flex and change in ways I wouldn't have ever imagined at the beginning of the year. Sometimes it was really, really hard. Other times, it was joyful to revel in the opportunity to have more quiet time and stillness. We persevered despite the challenges we faced, and here we are. We made it through. That alone is cause for celebration. When I look back at last year, I also realized that I accomplished the two goals I set out for myself despite the challenges. In November of 2019, I facilitated a retreat for a small group of amazing women. We started to vision what 2020 would look like, and we each developed some juicy, exciting goals, having no idea what was in store for us. We just wanted to live out loud and think big. I had two big goals. My first goal was to win the Toastmasters International World Championship of Speaking. I like to vision things. I saw myself happily accepting my winning trophy at the conference to be held in Paris in August. I could see myself giving my speech in the finals and hearing my name being called. But as you probably can imagine, there was no Paris. And I didn't win. Didn't even make it to the regionals. I did, however, win in our local club, the area, and the division level competition. That was awesome. I came in second in the district level competition, and only the winner moves on to the regionals. But even though I wasn't able to advance, I learned so much. I pushed myself to compete cheered myself on even when I was nervous and unsure. I asked for help from my fellow Toastmasters and colleagues. And my ever-supportive husband was so into it that he helped me think through the speech, 
came up with ideas as we drove around Florida pre-pandemic and listened to me practice more times than I can probably count. I put my all into that competition. And yes, it was disappointing that I didn't win. But you know what? Paris is rescheduled for this year. Assuming, of course, we can actually travel. I even told myself, instead of winning the competition on Zoom, because that's really not that exciting in my humble opinion, I could still win in person. But in all seriousness, this experience reminded me that it's not always about winning. This was definitely about the journey and the process, about how I grew as a speaker, about how it feels to be brave and put yourself out there when you're shaking and scared inside. It empowered me to see new possibilities for future competitions. But you know what? Ironically, losing the district competition propelled me forward to focus on my second goal. If I had kept on winning, I would have been focused on continuing to practice and perfect my speech. I came to see just how much time that took. Instead, I was freed up. Which brings me to the second goal, the Reinvention Rebels podcast. At the retreat, I had the bold idea that I would launch the podcast in January of 2020. Really? I said that in November? Yeah, sometimes I clearly have no idea how long things take. I got off to a slow start in January. Of course, got super sidetracked by all things COVID in the spring, then dealt with the death of a family member, further throwing me off my pursuits. I was struggling to even focus on it for quite some time. But you know what? When we have reimagined our life and have big, juicy goals, if we really want to do it, we find a way. In July, I got serious. I firmed up my plans. I started recording guest episodes. I found an amazing person to edit the podcast for me. I started to plan out a launch for August, which became September, and then ultimately October. But you know what? I did it. I did it. I focused on my dream, reconfigured and massaged it, asked for help, and ultimately persevered. It didn't always show up in the way I had imagined. I had to flex and change. Sometimes it was hard, and I thought a little bit about giving up, but I was true to this dream. So in the midst of personal and societal changes, that felt like a big, amazing victory. I share all this because reinventing ourselves, especially as we age, comes with fits and starts. We have to stay focused on our goals and figure out a game plan to overcome the inevitable challenges that may litter our path. I figure that if I can achieve my goals in the midst of uncertainty, fear, and unease, I can do almost anything. 2021 can only build on what I started to create in 2020. I hope this new year finds you feeling equally optimistic, hopeful, excited, a little lighter, and ready to welcome in new possibilities. Today, I want to talk about the second of my three R's, reimagine. You might remember that the three R's are reflect, reimagine, and restart. That are my winning strategy for becoming a reinvention rebel. In episode five, I talked about the power of reflection as the first step in charting your reinvention rebel's journey. If you haven't had a chance to listen to that one yet, I highly recommend it. I want to talk about reimagining in the context of your goals, and I want to inspire 
inspire you to shed your shoulds and embrace your desires. Have you ever noticed that a lot of men don't hesitate to have big, juicy, bold, ain't nothing gonna stop me goals? They claim it like it's already done and don't question that it's going to happen. They just know. They want it, they're gonna get it. Challenges, just a minor detour. They don't ask for permission. They just do it. But women, well, we often have to convince ourselves that we deserve to have whatever it is we say we want to do or achieve. So many of us are caught up in not feeling worthy. I have so been there before. It's an uphill battle sometimes in self-worth. And then that whole permission thing comes in. We spend a lot of time in our heads asking ourselves for permission to follow our dreams and make ourselves happy. Really? And you know what else? We play small. Where men have outrageously big goals, our goals often pale in comparison. We ask for a little instead of going big, putting ourselves out there and asking for a lot, maybe because we're afraid to fail or likely for many other reasons as well. Perhaps how we were raised has something to do with it or what society tells us about what we deserve. But what if that changed? What if you embraced 2021 with a big, bold, juicy, nothing's going to stop me now approach to seize the day? What if we were nervous or scared, but didn't let that get in the way of seeing through our plans? After all, if we've learned nothing from 2020, it's that we need to seize the day and take nothing for granted. Hey, amazing listeners. Want to have Reinvention Rebels inspiration delivered to your inbox? Head over to reinventionrebels.com and sign up for my news and notes. I want to share a five-step process to help you uncover your desires. Take a listen, noodle on it, and see if it might spark your 2021 visioning imagination. But first, let's talk for a moment about New Year's resolutions. I hate them. They don't work. I never stick to them. Every resolution I make, I ultimately break. Have you ever had that experience? Hmm. Something tells me that you certainly may have. For me, it has to do with perspective. Resolutions feel like shoulds. I should fill in the blank, lose weight, exercise more, stop watching so much TV, drink less, and on and on it goes. Shoulds don't motivate me. In fact, I find all those shoulds pretty soul crushing. I feel like I'm doing it out of obligation, telling myself I have to. Wendy, you have to drink eight glasses of water a day. Eat more greens. Squeeze yourself into last year's jeans after your COVID-15. Uh, yeah, that's not fun. Or the least bit inspiring. If you want to reimagine your life and create something new in your 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, or beyond, don't you want it to be something that's exciting? That you can't wait to tell your best friend? That you know can help others? Or help yourself in a way that's so cool and dynamic that you can't stop talking about it? That's what reimagining is about. Not something short-term that you feel pressured to do but something that shifts your perspective, helps you stretch beyond your comfort zone that you're inspired to do. So many of my guests in season one talked about how they reimagined their lives in juicy ways. Sharon moved abroad to Spain at 65 
and started embracing new adventures. Denise started a program at 68 to share the stories of people of color and spark meaningful dialogue about how to make the world a more just place. Barb transformed her codependencies into living each and every day on purpose with a gratitude practice that grounds her. At 82, Millie feels more empowered and focused than in her 40s adding value to the world in a myriad of different ways. You get the idea. These women think big, so big. That's what I'm talking about. What about you? What do you want to create? What are your biggest desires? Let me walk you through the reimagining process that I use. I've boiled it down to a few steps to keep it relatively simple. You could do this in one sitting, but I think it's much better broken up over the course of several days. So you get to write some things down, noodle on it, marinate it a bit, see what else comes to mind and bubbles up. I like to get started, think on it, then come back another time to continue. The whole key is tuning in in to your desires, not someone else's, but what you want. Step one, take stock of last year using self-reflection, which you guys know is one of my favorite things. Find a quiet, cozy space to write and reflect that feels special. Maybe it's a meditation room. Maybe it's your favorite spot in your den. Maybe it's your bedroom. But find that place that makes you feel happy and calm. And then let's start thinking about how did it go in 2020? What did you accomplish? And did you meet your goals? What was the best thing that happened toward your goals in 2020? And what got in the way? How satisfied are you with the outcome? What do you want to be different? in 2021. So some things to get you thinking about what happened last year. Step two, reimagine your juicy reinvention rebel life. This is the fun part. I love thinking about the future and then getting down to the work of creating it. I get to get out of my prescribed, often too small bubble. I get to think about things that inspire me. I get to play big. Again, find a quiet, fun space that inspires you. First, feel into your life. Sit in silence or try meditating to quiet your mind. Focus on your breathing. What thoughts naturally bubble up? What does your inner wisdom tell you? That's always the place I like to start. That's my internal compass that helps me uncover my true desires. Here are some questions you might ask yourself to get your creative juices flowing. In what way do you want to transform your life? What are some things that you want to achieve? What are you good at? Where do you shine? What do you love to do? What would it look like if you emerged as a vibrant reinvention rebel in your 60s or 70s or whatever age you might be? What would you be doing that you're not doing now? Where would you live? How would you spend your days? What contributions would you make to your family, community, or the world? Noodle on these thoughts for a while. Spend some time contemplating them, spending as much time as you can in silence, because that's where your soul really comes out to play. So once you've done that, at another time, I want you to get to step three, which is think even bigger. Remember when I mentioned that women are pros at playing small and not giving ourselves permission to make BS goals? Well, now's the time for you to revisit what you reimagined and perhaps 
recalibrate. If you've noodled on things for a few days, I want you to think back to how you want to show up as a reinvention rebel. Take a look at your goals and identify where you're playing small. Is it a juicy goal or just a so-so goal? Does it really motivate and inspire you? Or does it still feel more like a should? I should do X as opposed to a desire. What are the goals that sounded good when you wrote them, but when you reflect on them again, you know you could dream bigger or push yourself more. So take some time to really reflect on if I really show up in the world in the way I want to, is this big enough, bold enough, or could I take it up a notch or two to truly get at what I desire? So you'll do some more thinking about this, hopefully in quiet reflection as you have time. Step four, find an accountability partner to propel you forward. I've noticed that it's very easy to give up on ourselves. I've done this a lot in the past. I could tell you stories about the many unfinished projects and goals that I let pile up because it felt harder than I expected. Sometimes an obstacle comes along and we kick our plans, our big juicy desires, to the curb. Oh, hell no. That's not what a reinvention rebel does. We may run into unforeseen problems, but that's why we need someone to help us. I'm not talking about just anyone. And no, this person doesn't necessarily have to be a coach, but they are a trusted person in your life. Someone who equally dreams big. For me, it's my friend Robin. I met Robin through my colleague Kelly. Kelly kept telling me that you have to meet Robin. I just know you two will hit it off. And we sure did. We are kindred spirits using our voices for good. She threw her voiceovers, me through the podcast. We are each other's cheerleaders, truth tellers, and remind each other about those crazy big, I'm going to do it goals we set for ourselves. Who's your Robin? Think about someone who believes in your dream and vision. Someone who can be your truth teller when you're giving up on yourself. Someone who will push you to be your best. And finally, step five, decide when you're going to start. This part is so important, Reinvention Rebels. You've come up with some cool, juicy, nothing's going to stop me goals. Now you need to figure out how to make it happen. When is it realistic for you to get started? What are the first steps you need to take? How are you going to measure you're going in the right direction? And how can your accountability partner help with this? I recommend that you set up a regular time with him or her where you can both share your goals and progress with each other. That's the perfect opportunity to focus and overcome those obstacles that sometimes come up. Wow, I know that was a lot of information. I encourage you to listen again and soak it up more fully. Reinvention Rebels, it's the start of what I expect to be an amazing year of change and progress. Let's remember to focus on our desires, and ditch the shoulds. They really don't serve us. Let's reimagine life on our terms, not someone else's. Want to talk more about it? Let's continue this conversation about reimagination. Find me on Instagram at Reinvention Rebels or pop over to ReinventionRebels.com and share your thoughts. I hope this episode provided food for thought about how we can begin 2021 with fresh ideas, lightness, and possibility. I see lots of awesomeness in my life for 2021. I'm going to kick the shoulds to the curb and continue to focus on 
what inspires me, and the value I want to add to the world. Always remember that we can awaken to our true selves at any age, unapologetically following our deepest desires. Who cares what age we are? Just start moving in the direction of your deepest desires one small step at a time. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay true to yourself and shine your beautiful light. The world needs you and all that you have to offer. Hey, amazing listener. Did you love today's episode? Did you find inspiration you can apply to your own life? I'd love for you to take a moment to rate and review the Reinvention Rebels podcast on your favorite platform. That would be awesome and I would be so appreciative. Let's help spread the word to more people and get them inspired. Hey Rebel, if this episode inspired you to think about what's possible in your life, I'll share a little secret. Any of us can reinvent ourselves no matter where we are in our lives, any age, any stage. We just have to decide to get started. Here's a super simple way for you to get going with your reinvention dreams. Download my audio, five questions to spark your curiosity and inspire your reinvention journey. I share five key questions that will spur your thinking, help you uncover your dreams and motivate you to take action. Because if not now, when? Details in the show notes. Let's get inspired together.